What's going on church fam? It's church life bringing y'all another video. I pray everyone is having a wonderful and blessed day. So I was talking to the Heavenly Father about becoming new. Out with the old and with the new. And the Heavenly Father gently spoke in my spirit. He said, you must be broken down in order to be rebuilt into something new. And so when the Father spoke that to my spirit, I started thinking about renovations. That came to my mind. And you know, whenever someone is renovating a house, they got to strip out everything that's old on the inside. And they got to cast it out in order to rebuild something new. And maybe even reorganize the layout of how, you know, the house was made. And it might be something that they just want to take out in order to make the house more practical. And so when I started thinking about that, I started realizing the only way we could become new is that we must be broken down because that's what's going to begin the process of God stripping out the stuff that you don't need on the inside. See, Lord Jesus knows the man's heart. He knows your heart already. So he has to strip out the stuff that no longer suits your new life. You have to look like the newness of life. So as I'm having this conversation with the Heavenly Father, he brought me to this scripture. And it was when he did the first miracle, when he turned the water into wine. And it's in John 2, verse 19. Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. So basically the reason why Lord Jesus said that is because they were selling stuff in his father's house. They were selling stuff in his father's house and Lord Jesus got mad. He flipped the tables and he told them, hey man, don't turn this into a place of selling stuff, into a place of merchants. And of course the people tried to challenge him and that's when he said, destroy this temple and, we, and he will raise up another one in three days. And the scripture went on to say in John 2, verse 20 through 22, then said the Jews, fourth and six years was this temple in building and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. See, when you desire to become new, a new creature in Christ, just a better person overall, it's going to be miserable. Because God is removing stuff out of your life. That you enjoy to do. See, we got to be honest with ourselves. Sometimes we enjoy distractions. So in order to become new, God got to remove certain stuff out of, out of your life in order to make room for his presence to increase in your life, to be in your life. And I'm realizing when the merchants turn the church, the father's house, into a place of selling stuff. And Lord Jesus started flipping over the tables. That was him clearing out the space. So sometimes our life will become chaotic like that. Lord Jesus start flipping over the tables just so he can show you that this isn't the path. I want to play something new into your spirit. 
And that's my spirit. That's what Lord Jesus was sent here to do. And that's to give us a clean spirit. The spirit of Christ. Because at the end of that scripture, in John 2, he said he knows the man's heart. It's some stuff that we have to go through in order to become a new creature in Christ. And the first step is to deny yourself. And then we got to go through the process of being broke down. Being broke down with the truth in order to expose the lie that we have accepted. See, it's never an easy thing to just accept truth. That's why people didn't accept Lord Jesus. Because when he showed up, it revealed people's heart. It revealed what was in people's heart, in their mind, heart, and soul. And when something is being revealed that's attached to something bad, when you got to let it go, it's going to disrupt everything about your life. And it's going to feel like you're being tore down. But that's not the case at all. God is really stripping away the impurities. He's flipping tables to change you. To help you recognize the stuff that you may have been doing wrong. He's placing in you a new heart. That's the heart of Christ. He's giving you a new mindset. That's the mindset of Christ. We develop this mindset when we follow the narrow way that leads to life. That's Lord Jesus. God wants to change things about you. The more we follow Lord Jesus, the more we're becoming new. See, sometimes it's the pleasures of life that keep us from becoming new. Because we start seeking after stuff that brings temporary joy. Temporary relief from, you know, you might be going through a struggle in life. So you find something that's temporary to temporarily take you out of the mindset of the stress that that struggle may be bringing you. And so that's why I say when you want to do something different, it requires a lot of focus, a lot of discipline. It requires you to literally go through misery in order to see a better day. Long suffering. It's not an easy task to take on. Especially when there's things that's attached to your identity. See, the flesh desires the identity of the world. The flesh wants to look like the world. The flesh wants to feel what the world has to offer. It don't want to go through the 39 slashes, the crown of thorns. It don't want to carry the cross. The flesh don't want to do that. Lord Jesus said it best. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But if you desire to want to go through a change in life, we got to deny ourselves, follow Lord Jesus, and we got to pick up our cross daily. Because that cross represents Everything that you endure. That cross represents the salvation that Lord Jesus bled for so we can be saved. That cross represents how much you believe when you pick up your cross daily. And it represents your new identity. That's the identity that we find in Christ. It represents confidence. That's the confidence that we find in Christ. He will keep your foot from being taken by the enemy. That cross that Lord Jesus 
was placed on represents all the things that we now can overcome. We find all this when we delight ourselves in the Lord. When he sup with us and we sup with him. When he's knocking at the door and you let him in. That's how we become new. So after Lord Jesus was risen from the dead, you know, he was tore down. He was broken down. But the Heavenly Father didn't leave him in the condition that people put him in. He was risen on the third day. And people didn't believe. So he went to his disciples and he told them what to do. He said, spread the gospel to every creature. And he who believe and be baptized shall be saved. But if you don't believe, you shall be damned. And that's just letting us know that Lord Jesus gained a victory so that we may have a better life, a new life. But the part I want to pinpoint on is this. In Mark 16, verse 19 through 20, it say, So then after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was risen up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached every word, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. So, after Lord Jesus went through every single thing that he had to go through in order to fulfill the will of God, he was risen up to heaven and sat on the right hand of God. What we go through now won't compare to the glory that's to come. Yeah, it feels like misery. When you got to let go of stuff that you once enjoyed. When you got to separate yourself from friends that still participate in old habits. When you got to let go of family members. When you got to let go of jobs. When you got to go through this process of changing, it will be miserable. But the glory that's to come can't compare through the misery you must endure. Becoming a new creature in Christ will greatly transform your life for the better. You will start experiencing joy when you let go of stuff that was hurting you. Yeah, you thought this brought joy for a moment because it brought temporary pleasure. But once that temporary pleasure feeling begins to disappear, you're right back down to square one. In order to experience a true change, sometimes we got to leave our old environment. See, the words say, Lord Jesus, go to prepare a place for us. That's the expected end I want to come to. And I pray the same thing for you too. The person that's watching this video. I want you to experience the promises of God. I want you to believe that you have salvation because you believe in Lord Jesus. That you were saved because you believe in Lord Jesus. I want you to know that Lord Jesus loves you. He loves all of us. So... There is no easy way to become new. There is no easy way. We must become more disciplined, more consistent in our walk with Christ. We must read the scripture more. We must fast. We must pray. We must follow. Follow Lord Jesus. For he is the way to a better life. And 
we got to endure temptation. Because one thing the devil will try to do is when he recognized that this is becoming challenging for you, when you're trying to let go of old stuff so you can become new, he will try to give you a way out that's disguised in the form of temptation. And that's a word I had did on here as well before. But that's why we got to endure temptation. Because when we endure that temptation that the enemy is trying to bring our way, once we make it to the other side, we become stronger people. We become more spiritually mature. See, that's what's going to provide the spiritual strength. Everything that we endure. That's why I say the Christ represents everything that we can endure. See, through Christ, we find strength. Yeah, he was tempted to not want to do it. Because what the word say, after he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, the tempter came. Satan tried to tempt him to make him not do what he was called to do. So temptation will come. And that's why Lord Jesus say the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So when you live more in the spirit, that's how you override what the flesh wants to do. And that's how you override what the enemy is trying to tempt you with. So yeah, the tempter will come. But when you endure all of that pain that you must go through, your life will greatly transform. We have to look like the newness of life. We have to be stripped down. See, the stripping down process is usually in the form of isolation. When we're going through the valleys of the shadow of death, Sometimes we got to go almost to the brink of death in order to be reborn. Man, that was power. That was power. See, I got a brother that went through that process. You know, he, he was partying and it was his birthday coming up and so apparently he had some substance that he didn't know really what it was and he ended up in the ICU and he was in there for a couple of days he was on the breathing machine and everything and the doctor was telling us that he almost didn't make it. He literally died. But the breathing machine was keeping him, you know, still going. And they thought he was brain dead. They, they thought that if he wake up, he would be brain dead. But my mom spoke to him. And he jumped up. That's what brought life back into his body. And it's crazy because when I think about it, I just thought about this. Let me go back to John 2. Hold on, no, 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 no. Give me a second. I just thought about this, y'all. So when I think, when I thought about it, right? So at the Lord Jesus, was speaking to the people. I'm going to read this whole um, part. It's in Mark 16, verse 15 through 18. And it say, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believe and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believe not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, 
and they shall recover. You know, I just thought about that. When my brother was in the ICU and he was on that breathing machine, they basically was pronouncing him dead. They said his his oxygen level in his in his body was like none. So they had to put him on a breathing machine just to keep the oxygen going in his heart. He he had he even had a few heart attacks going through that situation. But when we got there and they let my mom go back there to see him, they said they they was telling my mom that he wouldn't respond to nothing. And they was putting uh I forgot on what medicine they put in you, like if you go through an overdose and stuff, but they put that medicine in him and he just wouldn't respond to nothing. He just wouldn't respond. He wouldn't wake up. And my mom spoke to him and she put it, she put her hands on him and she said, Trev, you got to fight through this. You got to fight through it. Dang. She said, she said, you got to fight through it. And she just spoke to him. And my brother heard her voice. And he jumped up and they said, whoa, whoa. The doctors around, they got, they were shocked because he wasn't responding to nothing. And he jumped up. So. That's what began the process of him changing as a person. And then what's crazy about it, y'all. So after a couple of days, he finally woke up all the way and he didn't have no brain damage, but he had a collapsed lung and he had, they, they say he had probably about like about two or mild heart attacks or something like that. He had a, he had a few heart attacks, but they was just, they was in disbelief. They couldn't believe how he was still able to, you know, um, wake up after all that. They thought it was over for him. But, you know, as I'm reading this scripture, and I, I just realized this. He, he said, these are the signs that's going to come. So when, when you're entering into the newness of life, and when you're becoming new in Christ, there's power that comes with that. And unfortunately, we do got to go through a level of misery in order for the power of God to manifest in our life. Because let's be real, none of us want to go through any pain and we don't want to see our loved ones go through pain either. But in order to know that you have the spirit of God in you, a certain level of pain must be present in order to display the power of God. It's not easy, y'all. But if we to get if we want but if we want to get to a place of trusting God wholeheartedly, eventually that's what's gonna happen in our lives. We're going to be able to cast out devils. We're going to be able to lay hands on the sick and they make a full recovery. That's what happened to my brother. Literally, I saw it with my own eyes. I mean, that's wild, bro. I ain't really. So you know how sometimes when certain stuff happening and you don't really think about it for real because all of it is shocking. Like it might be something bad that's shocking, but then once you recover from it and you make it through it later on, it'll hit you because something might happen and it just bring back to your memory. See, that's the Holy ghost too. That's another sign. Y'all the Holy ghost said it will teach you all things and bring stuff back to your memory that Lord Jesus had taught us. But that's what happened, y'all. It, 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 I didn't think about it at the time until 
after everything settled down. And now I'm able to recognize the power of God in that situation. And not only that situation, but in a lot more situations that we experience too. Man, God is good, bro. But your life will change for the better when you go through what you have to go through. This is the process we must go through in order to become new. And that situation with my brother, it was like a year ago when that happened. But looking back on it now, I recognize the power of God. And the more we become new, the more we surrender and submit to the will of God, the better our lives become. And by submitting to the will of God, we may have to endure certain stuff that's challenging, certain stuff that we don't want to go through. And the father might be saying, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, especially when the devil is trying to tempt you. Because when the, whenever the heavenly father says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, the devil will try to tempt you. But if you remain in the presence of God, he's going to plan a way for escape for you. And on the other side of all that pain is a better life. I'm living proof. My mom is living proof. My sister is living proof. My brother is living proof. And even after all that stuff my brother went through. So let, let me tell you this real quick. My brother ended up getting out of the hospital and stuff. And for the few, for the first couple of days, he was coughing up blood, um, throwing up, and it, it was just bad. And so finally he started healing even more. But then he was fighting charges. So he ended up getting out of the hospital. And then maybe like a week or so later, I can't remember the time frame, he ended up having to go to prison for three years. But even though he had to go through all that, he's changing mentally. See, that process helped him become a better person, a new person. So we got to die to oneself in order to be born again. Yeah. Sometimes in order to become new, you got to be stripped down in order to be rebuilt into something new. I pray this word bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love y'all. And I'm always keep y'all in my prayers. Real talk.